So I thought this was a really, really interesting locomotive that I thought we could talk a little bit about. So it's Victoria Railways used to operate these yeah. um, post-World War II. There was sort of like a um, an initiative to sort of get newer, more efficient, um, I guess, cheaper to run branch line services all right. over Victoria. So this was at a time when a lot of really small regional towns were, um, you know, the train, the railway line was an important um, important logistical system. Yep. Not so much now because a lot of those branch lines sort of closed yeah. down um, throughout the 70s and 80s. Uh, and this is a, uh, a Walker rail motor, they call this. Right. So it's quite a beautiful design. A nice streamlined aluminium body panels on it. Yes. And uh, this particular one's manufactured by Oscision. Yep. Um, it's really super nice detail on it. We're just going to see if we can show it from the top camera, actually. Oh, let's probably. see if we can kind of yeah. tilt it a little bit. Yeah. I, I can put it on the side, I think, just just like this, so we can that, have a look. That's good. Actually, that's really good. So I think from the front camera, it's a bit far. It's so. really interesting in the center section, isn't it? Very nice, yeah. So the interesting thing about that center section is that is where the motor lives. Oh, really? Like both on the actual real life prototype yeah. and on the on, on the model, model as well. As well. Oh, so right. you always have one carriage or one half of it that's being pushed and yes. the other one being pulled all the time. Right. Um, and there was actually a corridor that was offset on one side that allowed people to walk from one end to another. Right. Uh, so these were actually manufactured and designed in the UK. Yep. Um, and they were assembled at the Newport workshops, oh. mm -hmm. um, not very far from here, actually. Yeah. And uh, they ran them from, like, again, post-World War II, so sort of uh, like late 1940s all the way until about the late 1970s Wow, is when the last of these ran. And I think there's two of them in preservation at the Dalesford Railway. Right. Haven't seen the one right. yet. Um, but the paint scheme that this one is in is um, is sort of represents the 1950 through to 1955. Right. And then they repainted them, and then they went to the more um, recognizable sort of like blue and gold that right. that VR or V line used. Um, oh, yes, yes. Railways used at that time period. Yes. Uh, and this is a 280 horsepower Walker rail motor. So that's crazy to think because most cars now have more power than yes. what this would have that's had. True, actually. Yeah. And you can carry 90 people on this. Well, wow. 90. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. So it's a beautiful model. Uh, we don't have it set up to run because it takes up an awful lot of space and we would only be moving it like two <laughs> centimeters right. at yeah, a time. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. But I just, yeah, a beautiful piece of Art Deco design, lovely livery um, yes. with some, like a great insignia. There's Southern Cross on there and in, in the wings. Um, so that's a logo I've never really seen before, uh, but I really quite like it. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, beautiful locomotive. And this is number, for any, anyone's interest, number 86RM. Um, which I believe got scrapped. So this right. isn't one of the ones that made it, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. So they had first class and second class. Yeah. Right. So now the question is, being a such a long um, locomotive or, or, or train, what kind of radius do you suggest that this uh, should be running on? That is an excellent question. And um, so the, there's no swiveling bogey That's here. Right. This is this is um, fixed. Yeah. There is the bogey does swivel. On, might not be so easy to see Let me pop them on the uh, on the bottom, but there's not a lot of movement because it makes contact with the sides of the body. Yeah. So I would say large. I would hazard a guess and say minimum third radius. Yeah. In in sort of like Pico Hornby sort of speak, uh, but yeah, definitely not like 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 not first that, radius or anything like that. So that's that's right. Yeah. But with most passenger express equipment. Very much so. That's yeah. usually the case, the case, is that yeah. the really tight radius track isn't ideal for it. That's right. And, and I, I thought there wouldn't be much um, ability of moving them, articulating them either, isn't it? Well, they're, they're quite, because it's very streamlined design. Yeah. And it's sort of neatly tucked. Uh, the wheels are neatly tucked in there, sort of to help with that streamlined yeah. shape. Yeah. Whether these things are wind tunnel tested, I, I don't really I'm know. So, yeah. But <laughs> you can you can see how these, these lift off. Yeah. Because the wheels are only on the ends. Right. Oh, right. So, um, so they sort of lift off like that. And then the wiring for the lighting and for the electrical pickup oh, um, right. runs, yeah, into, runs, the runs yeah. into the center. But it's amazing that they sort of kept it true to the prototype and, and left the center section, yeah. the powered section. Yeah, I, I was noticing that while it's articulate, it's actually that the gap is quite small. Yes. They wouldn't be able to do any any sharp turns. So that's probably the max. The max you're going to get, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But so the, put it on top. That, well, that, that's definitely one thing to consider. But 
on the other hand, it also makes for a very realistic looking train. That's true. You mm. don't have Absolutely. big unsightly gaps um, between the, the different sections. True, true. So a beautiful model, even it just is. the display would be really I think nice. so, yeah. It's, it's, when when it's, uh, it's like this, it's beautiful. Nice color, I like the aluminum finish on this. Yeah. A windshield wiper on the front. That's Probably right. another one on the other side. And there's obviously interior details. So kind of nice to put some people in there. Yeah. Mm. So these mostly ran out of Melbourne. Yes. The surrounding branch lines. So um, I think to like Lee and Gatha, Wanthaggy, yeah. okay. um, Werribee, when Werribee was still considered to be like a regional branch line. Yeah, right. And Geelong to Ballarat, I think also wow. had one of these too. So wow. there was actually quite a lot and there's a few in preservation still going. Do so, we know the speed of those? You know, I'm really not sure. That's one thing that I didn't know about these. Um, I'd say that they'd probably go, like the thing is, um, it might these might be able to go fast, but the lines they were operating probably weren't True. rated to go high speed. So mm. I, I would say that these rarely probably ever got over like say 100 kilometers an hour, yeah. especially once they got out of the major lines and onto the yeah. branch lines. Yeah, true. Yeah. But the yeah. the general idea was that they were efficient in terms of how many people you could fit, mm -hmm. and it would be a lot cheaper than running like a steam locomotive with with like heavier wooden bodied carriages. So sort of like more of a, a an efficiency thing. Yes, definitely.